and went and hang himself. I want y'all to please excuse me because it's not my intent to be bold, bold or to be rude or to be out of place. But I always believe you have to preach it, tell it, teach it like it's in you. So I want to talk. I want us to talk. And when I say us, us to talk, it's going to be my voice. But I must be honest with you. This person named Judas is in me. Mm. And he wants to take the microphone because he, he see, I got to speak to him. I got to tell him. I got to tell him I was, I was so damn close. I was so damn close. All my life, listen to me speak in my spirit. All my life, I struggled. I struggled because I always wanted to be somebody. Growing up in the world, sometimes you look and you see superstars and you see people who have made it and been declared by all humanity that they are successful and they are great. And in my mind, I recall even as a little boy, I desired to be somebody. Always wanted, always wanted to be able to say I made it, that I, that I, I climbed the hill, that even if I had to climb up the rough side of the mountain, I was yet still able to prevail. I wanted to be the one that sticks the flag in the sand and declares all of those down beneath. I made it. And I think in retrospect, when I think about the totality of my life, when I think about even the fact that I, I, I went through this whole metamorphosis called life where I went through some trials and tribulations, at the end of the day, the Bible records that I hang myself. And I've had some time now to, to think about why it is that I would do such a thing and why it is that one could start off with this magnificent belief and desire to be great and to be high and powerful and yet at the end of the day they take their own lives because that's exactly what I did with the rope. I killed myself. I started, started thinking about it because, you know, once you close your eyes on this side, I need you to know that that's not the end of it all. That, that, that's not where the story ends. That's only the beginning of your eternity. And if you don't have it right on this side, then you won't be on the right side when you open your eyes. In eternal life, he says, and I, I hear him in my spirit. He, he's encouraging me and he's trying to tell me, he's saying to me, Preacher, whatever you do, make sure that you keep your eye on the prize, the real prize. Don't be distracted by distraction, but rather keep your mind and your spirit and your focus on the main attraction. And unless you don't know it by now, there is only one bright and morning star. There is only one that deserves the praise, the honor, and the glory. There is only one uh, that has significance when it comes to this side. And, and that's, that was my problem, he says. He says, my problem was that I found out that it wasn't the rope that killed me. It wasn't being on the hill. It wasn't the tree branch when it broke. That's not what killed me. But what killed me were three mortal enemies that had conspired and they had come against me all my life. And those three mortal enemies 
Ironically, it was me, myself, and I couldn't see it when I was on that side. And I would want to tell those of you who might be listening to my voice right now, you need to recognize and realize that your greatest enemy is not the one that's in flesh and blood that you called out across the street or the one that rivals your game or the one that goes against your posse. But your worst enemy is in a you. It is me, myself, and I. And that's why I wanted to speak today. Because I need somebody to know that the real problem is not somebody else. But the real problem is yourself. You. Me, myself, and, and I. And it starts off at an early age. It begins at an early point in your life. Even as a little boy, when you first begin to recognize it and realize and become aware of things and people, people and, and faces and, and situations, when you start realizing and sensing your emotions, when you begin to build on the inside the way that you cope and the way that you deal with things and how you see the world, that is the beginning of your me, of yourself, myself, and I, if I had recognized this early, if I had realized that there was a great danger in allowing these three enemies to combine against you, had I killed that thing early, I would have never been able to say, I just got so damn close. Me love. When I build my world around me, me, me. I know you probably read the record. I know you probably already seen. I know somebody has already told you, some preacher or somebody has already suggested and reminded you that I was a thief. I was a robber. And the reason why I was a thief and why I was a robber, even in the midst of the core group of our disciples following behind the rabbi Jesus, the reason why it was that I was that way was because I had practiced that when I was a little boy. And that's why you got to be careful what you practice because whatever you practice, you're going to become good at. That's why mama didn't let us say any kind of stuff. That's why we couldn't walk around cussing as a little boy, little girl, because she recognized and realized that's the kind of woman, that's the kind of man you're going to be. Whatever you show us early, if you keep on not being allowed to get away with it, that's what you will become. And that was God. In me. Because who is going to help me if it's not me? Hmm. And when a person lifts up themselves above everybody else, when they consider themselves better than anybody else, when they only look out for themselves, their eyes are focused on me. And you've got to get off of this addiction to the spotlight. Understand this one day, every knee must bow and every tongue gonna have to confess that he's king of kings and lord of lords. You've got to get beyond me. Me is too limited. Me is too compromised. Me is too small. And no matter how much I try to get people to see me, no matter how much I try to explain me to others, no one is going to ever, ever bring value to me. Because me has no value. And I took too long to realize what advantage is the man who gains the whole wide world and turns around and loses his soul. And that's why today I'm struggling because I know I was so damn close. I feel like nobody else was closer and losing it. To be so close and yet not attain heaven. To be so close and not ever attain that peace that passes all understanding. To be so close and never ever walk those streets of gold. To be so close and never see those pearly gates. To be so and I can't blame it on anybody else. It was because of 
me. Me. So me has some some eternal quality to it. As though me could actually raise those that are dead. As though me could somehow part the world waters and allow the Israelites to walk on dry land. As though me somehow had a connection on by itself to God and sat with God and talked with God and was there with God since the beginning. There is nothing to me and it took me too long. I was too late to learn it. It wasn't the rope that killed me. It wasn't, it wasn't the snapping of my neck that took me out of here. The real culprits was not the Sadducees nor the Pharisees. The real, the real culprits were not the enemies of Jesus. But the real culprit was me, myself, and I. Some of you have spent years making yourselves into kingdoms. Years presenting yourself as cathedrals for man to see and to adore and to worship. But I need you to understand that history is full and complete with those same cathedrals and those same buildings and those same big, large, and huge, dominant places called men who died. Napoleon died. Julius Caesar died. Presidents died. Kings Die. I want you to remind yourself that one of these days the me will cease to be. And then what will you have? I was so damn close. My greatest respect. I cannot get that out of my spirit. I cannot remove that from it. the very fact that it would be one thing had I never seen it. It would be another thing had I never touched it. It would be another thing had I not never heard the words being preached. If I had never felt the seen the, the spirit that was in the Christ. If I had never ever heard his voice. If I had never ever seen his miracle. That would be one thing. But I saw all of it. And some of you need to realize today you've seen it too in your own life. On these modern times, in these current days, you have already seen what God has been doing. It is undeniable. It would be a fool who would think that somehow their might and their strength and their mind or their looks and somehow their popularity or somehow it is something about their presence has exalted you to where you are. If the truth be told, everybody listening to me and everybody around you should be dead sleeping in your grave. And I want to warn you, yeah. you're so damn close. Hmm. There was always me, as long as I could remember. There was always me, as long as I remember, I remember, I remember. I, and now in retrospect, I think to myself, how, how can I steal from other people who have worked hard or uh, somehow have attained some goods that my I desire? And being caught up with me, I felt like I should have it above them. And so I would stick my hands and steal from people. I, I don't understand how it is that I become so exalted in my own mind when in truth, I'm no better than anybody else. Me, myself, and I. This what killed Judas is scary. Whoever he is, was, shall be. In fact, I. I didn't even know who the me was that I was trying to. I said, change the lot. Lest I keep you too long. You don't know who you are. Preach, Pastor. 
I thought I knew who I was. I thought I knew what I wanted. I, I, I thought I understood. I thought I had some kind of clarity. But in the midst of my clarity, there was a lot of disparity. And the disparity came because sometimes I felt like a nut. And sometimes I didn't. It seemed like I was changing from year to year. From circumstance to circumstance. I was never stable. There was always a problem with me. And that's why I'm trying to get somebody today to realize there is no value in yourself. Become as you are. Thus. Mm. Filthy rags. At the disposal of God. Myself. <sighs> I must pause here now because... Myself was the second killer. And those of you who are listening to me right now, I need you to hear what I'm about to say because this is probably one of the most vital truths in all of our lives. One of the biggest killers of every man is myself. The word myself means it's personal. It's, it's personal. And oftentimes what is personal is confidential. I'm going to say it again. Oftentimes that which is personal is confidential. And it's so confidential that you lock it on the inside of yourself somehow with a lock and key. And nobody ever knows that you are struggling. Nobody ever knows what you're going through. Nobody ever knows what you don't know and what you do know. Nobody ever knows when you are crying. Nobody knows when you are struggling. Nobody knows when you are dying. And nobody around me knew that myself was telling me because I kept it all hmm. to myself. One of the reasons why folk don't get help because they keep too much stuff way too long within themselves. And I was guilty as charged. I believe one of the biggest crosses that I bear, one of the biggest pains that I suffered with, one of the biggest problems that was most traumatic and dramatic over my entire lifetime is that I never learned how to communicate. I never learned how to talk to people about the things that were important to me. Rather than fuss and argue, rather than open it up and speak it, I just Keep it to myself. Somebody listening to me right now. The reason why you are always going to be so damn close is because you don't know how to open up your damn mouth. Sure. I feel like I'm slipping a little mm, bit too mm, much. Mm, mm. 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 You look and you say, well, Judas... You can't tell everybody everything. No, you can't tell everybody all your business. You're right. I, I don't talk to people and tell them my problems because I've been betrayed and burned and hurt in the past as a result of doing such things. Well, maybe that is so. But don't allow everybody to become everybody. Because there are some people who are different than other people. And we need to recognize and realize God will send people our way to help us. But if you are so caught up in yourself, myself, myself, it's going to be like a cancer that eats you alive and nobody will ever know. People thought I was together. So much so that they elected me to be the treasurer. Here I am, a thief, a robber, on the down low. But they allowed me to be the treasurer. 
I was a leader in that capacity. I put on a shell and a front. I was a master at masquerade. And I was able to convince people that I was who I was not. It was all based on the fact that I knew how to keep some things to myself. And that was a part of the biggest problem. Myself. I didn't open up and talk much about my problems and my struggle with Jesus. Because I didn't trust me. Because I knew me. I didn't tell other folk that I had a proclivity, a leaning for thievery. Because I felt like then they would have judged me. And because I don't want people to judge me, I keep my hidden things in myself. Sometimes your mama don't even know. Daddy doesn't know. Cousins don't know. Brothers and sisters don't know. Even your ace boom coon doesn't know. And I want you to know, some of you saying, well, I don't, I just keep it to myself because I'm going to work it out in my own mind. I'm going to work it out in my own spirit. I'm going to get it together myself. But I need you to understand, it's been a long time, baby. You've been working with that same lie and you ain't got it together yet. Because some things only God can do. Amen. And sometimes angels come to come to us in disguise, and we we are caught up in ourself. When it's about myself, I won't even allow an angel to reach me because I'm too paranoid. I'm too suspicious. I'm too sus caught up. I'm just caught up in myself. I see it now. It's I should have told Matthew or Mark. I should have told Simon Peter. I, I should have told Luke. I should have told John. I should have told somebody about my struggles. But now when it comes to me, I didn't even tell Jesus. And some of you haven't even told Jesus. No, 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 no. I know that you say that you pray. I know that you say that you pray. But I need you to understand that there is a difference between talking at God and talking with God. If you're talking with God, that means you're also listening to God. But if you're talking at God, that is not a dialogue, but a monologue. And so you're wondering why it is that you never get any responses because you're still talking to myself, mm. praying to myself, mm. thinking to myself, mm. feeling to myself, trying to diagnose to myself, trying to write out a prescription to myself. And if it hasn't worked this point in your life, at some point, you've got to begin to realize that the very definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, getting the same result, and keep believing you're going to get a different result. <laughs> That's insanity. I guess maybe myself was insane. Because that's what I did. It was about me that was a mortal killer for me. Three assassins. Three assassins in my spirit. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself. Now you're looking at me and you're saying, preacher, but I don't, I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to communicate. I, I tried in the past and it, did, it didn't work out well. Let me tell you something. You can only hold inflammation. You can only hold infection in you for so long before it will kill you. And if you don't believe me, you need to realize you talking to a man. I, Judas Iscariot, end up falling down after trying to hang myself. Branch break from my weight. I fell to the rocks because of me, myself, and 
I. The third assassin spiritually. No, 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 no. I got to pull back real quickly and tell you something. I got to pull back and tell you. Listen, listen, listen. This is what I found out. I found I found out this, 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 this came to me. And that's this, that you are never alone. Mm. Myself is never alone. Myself was never, it was never alone. Myself and no man will ever be alone with himself. There may not be somebody else around you. There may not be anybody else in the room. There may not be anybody else in the closet. But don't you ever think you are alone? No, no, no. I get it now. I wasn't ever alone. I was always present. Is he the God? Or the real enemy. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood. But evil powers and principality. Yeah. I get it. I get it now. I, I, I was never alone with myself. But yet I thought. I thought. I thought. I thought I was alone. But I never was alone. The enemy. Enemy. The enemy. Enemy. The enemy. Enemy. Was always talking. To myself, through myself. And that's why I was always so damn close, but never able to grasp it. The enemy will come to you and talk to you, to yourself, play you all kinds of mental. Mind game videos. Hmm. Always presenting to you the worst case scenarios in your life. Always denying the power of God to be able to bring you out of stuff. Always talking about your past and your pain and your trauma and your suffering and your shame. Always reminding you and robbing you of the motivation to go forward. Now I know why I couldn't go forward. Now I understand because I was tortured. In myself. And I thought I was alone. By myself. Wow. Wow. So damn close. I. Assassin number three. I always have an excuse. I always trying to figure it out. I never want to be cast in the spotlight of shame. I never wanted to be beneath somebody else. I it was all I. I think about it even to myself right now when when it was that I, I went to to, 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 to 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 them and I brought them the money because I was I I I was thinking about my own coffers. I was thinking about my own well-being. I was trying to take advantage of the situation because I felt like this Jesus and all of these three years of following him was not amounting to what I thought it was going to be. I, I, I. So damn close. Ah, ah, like a haunting echo to me. Ah, ah. Like a bad and recurring nightmare over and over again. Ah, ah, ah. Like a guilty pounding gavel. Say it, I was wrong. Ah, I cannot get it out of my. Ah, I was stupid. Because right there in front of me was the truth and the light. Right there in front of me were the keys, the door to.
to the kingdom. Right there in front of me was the hope of all mankind. Right there in front of me was the Son of God. Right there in front of me was the Lamb of God. And I was so damn close. I perceive in my spirit some of you are so close. You may be going through some stuff right now. You might be struggling right now. You may not be able to see how God can make a way out of this mess that you're in. You may not believe that God could ever put you in a healthy relationship. You may believe that you'll never be able to come out of this financially. You might believe you won't be able to survive it. But I want you to know that weeping endures for the night and joy comes in the morning. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. You are so damn close. Me, myself, and I. Can kill you. I think. I, I need to come. Nowhere is it recorded. In scripture. That a man got so close that he kissed Jesus. Mm -hmm. See how close I was. And you could be so close and yet so far away. Watch. I remember when they came and they took him. After I had a pocket full of money, 30 pieces of silver. And you know what I did with it? I came, I realized that I was wrong. I started thinking about the value, the quality of the Christ of the Messiah and seeing him go through all of this and remembering who he was and what he had said. Some things began for the first time in my mind to connect and I began to realize that of all of the dishonorable things that I have done, this one thing right here is the defining moment of who I am. And that was the lie I told myself. That was the lie that me told me. I kept within myself. The lie was that I was sin. Instead of I am a sinner. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, if you're listening to me, I need you to hear the concept. Because it is a remarkable concept. You are never sin. It doesn't matter how much sin you have been in. No matter what you have done. No matter how people see you. No matter how they treat to define you. I need you to understand. You may be a sinner. But you are never sin. And God is never against the sinner. But the sin. I heard him say one time. I am come. That you might have life and life more abundantly. He told me these words and had I not been blinded by me, myself and I, then I could have heard that even in the midst of this moment where I have betrayed 
him in the midst of this moment where I have done him wrong, yet there was still hope for my redemption. Just as I just feel that in my spirit, I am the one one we. But listen, listen, listen. I need you to hear this. I, I won't keep you long. I'll let you go on with your day. But I need you to understand these things. He says in my spirit over and over again. But preacher tell them. I was so damn close. And I hang myself. I hang myself. On that Friday. And he rose. Mm. On that Sunday. I hang myself. On that Friday. And he rose. On that Sunday, you're not getting it, you're not understanding, I need you to really allow, allow, listen, listen, I'm trying to tell you how close I was, because if I would have just gone through it, if I would have just gone and hang in there, if I would have just allowed myself to crucify me, myself, and I, and just had waited, I would have seen his resurrection. <laughs> That's pretty much how my life goes. I guess I've always been pretty much a mess up. Some of you right now feel like you are messed up. Like there's no hope, like there is no redemption. But I want to remind you to look at my life and recognize I was so damn close. And had I just sat and waited on God, I would have seen his redemption. I would have seen his glory. I would have had the opportunity to repent and give him my life. And that's why it came anyway. God is not the well that needs the doctor. Mm. It's the sick like me. So as I get ready to let you go in. Resign myself to my fate. Watch those three. Me, myself, and I. Watch them. Check them. Crucify them. Don't let them get you. Don't let them consume you. Don't allow the devil to catch you in isolation and beat upon your mind and in your spirit. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory. Glory. Mm, glory. And so if you listen to my voice, just then, I am without one But that the Lord's blood, it was shed for little old me, and, and that <laughs> thou beats me. Come to thee, O Lamb of God, O I come 
I come just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark light to can cleanse each spot or lamb of God right now come I I I'm just saying this. If you don't know him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish. But have everlasting life. I don't want you to ever be in that position. Where you will ever be able to say. I didn't make it. Hmm. But I was so damn close.